Ally Aquinta, Dan Hooker. And this fight was, um, it was particularly interesting because Dan Hooker came out and absolutely dismantled Ally Aquinta. Dismantled him completely. And I go into this fight thinking Ally Quinta has learned from his mistakes with, with Cowboy and dealt with the reach advantage of taller fighters before. So possibly this can be something where we see Al get back into to his groove and, and get back toward that title contention and see another matchup possibly with Habib or possibly down the road uh, you know, in that top five. Dan Hooker had other plans. And Dan Hooker came in and not only utilized his reach with his jab, um, but the front kicks, the front low kicks, Dan Hooker was lighting Ally Aquinta up like a Christmas tree. And it wasn't just the punches and the kicks from this fight because Dan Hooker clearly was superior in that realm, at least for this fight. It just wasn't Al's night. Al had some, some issues getting into that range. And, uh, obviously when that front leg is damaged, like it was, that's going to spell trouble when you have to go Southpaw and you're not necessarily used to fighting Southpaw. So Dan Hooker did a great job, uh, came in, executed a game plan. But obviously the more interesting part of this, at least to me, is the call out afterward. Dan Hooker gets on the mic and says, almost in a, in a professional wrestling style shoot promo type thing, he gets on the mic and says, Dustin Poirier, I'm going to end you. 2020, I'm going to end you. Which is odd for me because I don't know how much that Dan Hooker knows Dustin Poirier or if they have some sort of history, but it sounded personal. I don't know if it did to you guys, but that that sounded personal to me. You don't usually call a guy out and say, I'm going to end you unless he has a title, unless you have some personal beef or your teammates have some personal beef or he's the biggest star in the world a la Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. And even that, it wasn't, I'm going to end you. Like, that's almost a physical death violence threat thing that that Daniel or that Dan tried to emulate. I don't know what that was. But it interests me. Immediately got my attention. And these post fight interviews, it, it almost seems rehearsed. Okay, who's your next opponent going to be? And they hand him the mic, and you got to say someone's name, one. Say whoever they'll give me two or yell 60 G's, baby, for your victory bonus. That, that seems like what is the the natural order of things at this point. Dan Hooker took it a step further and said, I'm going to end you. Dustin Poirier responded and said, yeah, that's great, Dan. Great fight. You're not there yet. I'm fighting the Irishman next. And this is what I found the most interesting. That was fun with Dan Hooker giving the call out. Again, I'm interested I'd like to see that fight. I think Dan Hooker poses a really good threat to, to uh, Dustin Poirier. But this is the part that interested me the most. When when Dustin said he was going to fight Connor next on Twitter, the reporters in the post-fight asked uh, Dan about this. And Dan said, oh, well, if you're interested in chasing leprechauns, that's your own thing. Now, this interested me for a couple of reasons. Connor McGregor is a very vocal supporter of Israel Adesanya. I know this is going to get a little weird, guys. It's going to go down the rabbit hole, but it interests me. Israel Adesanya, because of the link to Conor McGregor through their management agency paradigm, which is close here in Irvine, California, um, is one of Dan Hooker's best friends and teammates. So I don't know how a Conor McGregor would take Dan Hooker's comments after being so vocally supportive of Israel Adesanya. Regardless of how Connor takes it, it, it'll probably go nowhere, but it seems to me like Dan Hooker's looking for a fight, and it isn't with just Dustin Poirier. You want to talk about a guy that is having a resurgence at 155? Imagine a guy that, that looks like Dan Hooker, by the way, who is around, you know, it looks like around 190 pounds when he's, you know, in his fight shape. He used to fight at 145. So coming back to 155 and having this type of resurgence, Dan Hooker's hungry, and he looks damn good. Whether it's Dustin Poirier, whether it's Cowboy, whether it's Conor McGregor, let's keep an eye on Dan Hooker. And guys, we all know, 
There's only one way to win at Hangman. You got to catch a body. 